I'm Joy Buchanan with YCAP, and today I have a lady with me who needs no introduction to most of you who live in Saline County, but for those of you who haven't been around forever, this is Mrs. Arlene Rainey. I'm going to step out of the camera now and let her take over. Quickly. As Joy said, I am Arlene Heighton Rainey, the daughter of Charles Dean Heighton, who was known widely as Bullet, a nickname he acquired as a child. Stuck with him all his life, and most people, including me, didn't know that he had a real name for a long while. <laughs> he is the developer of the Nile Pottery, for which Saline County is well known. Uh, there were many potteries in, in Benton before his father came here. Uh, the first pottery in Benton was in 1868. Uh, Mr. Lafayette Glass came. He established a pottery on the corner where the jingle store used to be. I don't know how the word spread about the unique plays that were in this area. What made them unique was that they were re related to the bauxite ores. They were a step in the ages in which uh, bauxite was developed. And what properties the geologists have told us that that's the process by which the clays were developed. The first potteries here, and for many years, they all made stoneware, which was practical farm and home use ware. Uh, such as jugs, churns, crocks, and uh, that type of, of utility wear. Most of these were not marked. Occasionally, one would be marked, but they all made similar wares, so it's hard to tell if you find, if you collect a stoneware, it's hard to tell usually which pottery made which vessel. Uh, the, my father's husband, father came here in 1875 from Missouri where he had had uh, worked in potteries with the Caldwell family. The what town? What was his name? His name was Frank, Franklin Hyten. Uh, the Caldwell family came here from Missouri and they were my mother's people. They were also potters where they had been potters in Missouri. So Hyten had worked for them in Missouri. He followed them to Saline County, and they naturally all fell into the pottery business here. Mr. Hyten, Frank Hyten, came here in 1875. My father was born here in 1877. He, Mr. Frank Hyten, worked for the other potteries to begin with. Later on, he had his own pottery. And he had uh, four sons. They all grew up, my, including my father, grew up in the pottery. Their home and their shop was on at the same location. So they all learned that as naturally as they learned to walk and talk. They learned to make pottery. My father, Bullet, was the only one who stayed in that profession. The others worked from time to time with him. Uh, they were making stoneware, same as the others. They began with the name, when their father moved, when their father died, they, I don't know that they had a name, but they became the Heighton Brothers. When he died, the, it was the Heighton Brothers pottery, and I have a vessel that's marked that way. The other brothers, as I said, did not stay in the profession. By 1901, their stoneware business had acquired the name of Eagle Pottery. And they never, the pottery, the Nilo potteries, they never stopped making stoneware. As the years went on, as long as Nilo was made, Eagle stoneware was made. About 1910, uh, People came to Bullet with the idea of developing an art pottery from the colored clays that were available locally. 
he did not know anything about artware, but he assembled a team and they built a special building on the grounds of the original pottery. And no one was allowed in that building except the people who were working on this project. Now this was located on uh, Military Road uh, where Congo enters military, right there at Lincoln Square. It burned in 1910 and they rebuilt at the end of Market Street to the west side of Market Street. They built a, by that time, Nilo had already become popular, so they needed a bigger building. They built a two-story building there, brick building, and uh, where they had had one killed on Military Road, they eventually had four kills on the Market Street location. Uh, he formed an, uh, he could not finance this uh, venture by himself. He formed a, a coalition of several local businessmen and they financed getting it off the ground and it was an immediate success. Uh, visitors came from er all around the state and, and other locations to see because it was unique. There's never been anything like it made before, nor since for that matter. It has been copied, but it's never been actually reproduced. Became very popular. And by 1918, he owned the entire operation. Uh, the charm of this pottery to me is that it comes from the ground to the finished product as a homegrown industry. Uh, they dug it from the ground, they, they hauled it. The clay pits mostly were up and down Military Road. And they hauled it by a wagon and team. They dug it from the ground. It was not underground. It was surface mining. They called them clay pits. And they were all up and down Military. And when they dug it from the ground, it was kind of chalk-like, and they had to reduce it to a liquid and strain all the debris out of it. And then they had the colors were in the ground, the different colors of clays. But when they fired it through the intense heat of the kill, which was generally about uh, 12 to 1500 degrees, it burned out the color. So they had to devise a way to retain that color. They used various chemicals such as iron oxide and uh, uh, blue, what's blue color? Cobalt. Cobalt and various uh, chemicals of that kind. So they were reproducing the colors as they were seen in the ground, but they did have to be reinforced, enhanced with artificial color. Every piece was hand turned and within a very few years it was being shipped all over Arkansas, throughout the United States, and even in Europe sometimes. Uh, this was very successful and as I said before, they never quit making the stoneware. The stoneware was solid white, sometimes a combination of white and brown. But that actually was the lifeblood of the pottery business. Because they couldn't produce enough nylo to sustain the whole uh, operation. So the lifeblood was in the stoneware and in flower pots. They made flower pots by the Jillians and sold them to nurseries all over central Arkansas. Every piece hand turned. Uh, Bullitt made most of the pottery, but he had several other excellent potters who also turned. Um, one of them was uh, Fred Johnson. He later went to California where he had a good career in, uh, in uh, potter business. The McNeils, uh, Olin Call, um, um, 
some of the names I can't even recall offhand, but there were at least five or six other potters who made nylon. By the 1930s, when the Depression set in, of course people did not need art pottery. They still bought it, it's still sold widely, but they, it was a depressed time, certainly, not only for his potter, pottery, but uh, all the others. The others, his pottery, the Eagle pottery was the only potter, pottery in Benton by 1901. That was the only pottery that was left. Uh, they lot, he, he owned the pottery, at, really owned the pottery at that time. But he lost it, lost the whole business, all his clay bags, the patent, the